Zustand. Welcome to our online remembrance service. All of the various elements of this service were recorded on Wednesday this week, the day before the present lockdown began. I'm extremely grateful to all the participants. The words to our two hymns, along with the words to some of the prayers, will be displayed on the screen. Please raise the roof wherever you live, remembering that God examines our hearts, not our voices. We meet together in the presence of God because we care. We long for a world where everyone may together live in freedom, justice and peace. We commit ourselves to work for that world, recognising the truth that changing the world always begins with changing ourselves. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. In this strangest of years, we also remember those who've lost their lives to illness, their loved ones whose grieving has often been made more difficult by the various restrictions and those who, through their dedication and courage, have reminded us what true service and real sacrifice looks like. Some sentences or wisdom from the Scriptures. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. They shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will, we will remember. remember.
we sing our first hymn, O God Our Help in Ages Past. graciously give us all things. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus Christ who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we say, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither night nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our second reading will be read by Mr. Michael Featherston Dilk, Vice Lord Lieutenant of Warwickshire. A Sonnet for the Unseen, a poem for care is by Malcolm Geit. When planning first started for today's service and parade, there was the desire to honour NHS staff and other key workers. But plans have had to change a great deal, and this poem by Malcolm Geit is dedicated in honour of all who have demonstrated their care these past eight months of this pandemic. 
So much goes unseen and stays unsaid. So much that carers keep within their hearts. The children who get parents out of bed, already tired before their school day begins. The neighbours who keep giving up their time to add a daily round of extra care. Veronica's who cleanse the sweat and grime, and those whose gift is simply being there. The patient partners lifting up a cross to bear the burden their beloved bears, who ease each other through the pain and loss and feel that no one sees and no one cares. But there is one to hear, to feel, to see, and he will say, he did it unto me. We now have a song in Flanders Fields, sung and played by Simon Davis, who's also our technical expert recording this service. I demand that you love each other as much as I love you. And here is how to measure it. The greatest love is shown when a person lays down his life for his friends. And you are my friends if you obey me. I no longer call you slaves, for a master doesn't confide in his slaves 
now as you are my friends, provided by the fact that I have told you everything the Father has told me. You didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lovely fruit always, so that no matter what you ask from the Father, using my name, he will give it to you. I demand that you love each other. This is the word of the Lord. What are your lifelines? I mean the things we cling to that keep us afloat, even through the most challenging times, when life's waters get decidedly choppy. For many people, family is their key lifeline. Or it might be a neighbour or close friend. For some, it's a professional carer. And for some, faith is a lifeline. Certainly many have said to me through this present pandemic that they don't know what they'd do without their faith. And if this time is challenging, how much more was wartime? Both for those on active duty and also for those on the home front. We especially honour today those who made the ultimate sacrifice. But it's good to remember everyone who played their part. Similarly, now in our own day, we most especially honour those who've died after contracting COVID whilst going about their duty of care. And we also pay tribute to the many key workers, carers, neighbours, friends and family members who've gone above and beyond to make sure no one is forgotten, ensuring that everyone has food and other essential supplies, that those who are shielding don't become isolated but rather are checked up on, who, even when they're weary, pick up the phone in order to brighten someone's day. Most of us weren't alive during the last World War, but it's helpful to evoke that wartime spirit of service, care and sacrifice that brought communities closer together and saw us through, and can surely do so again. Perhaps we appreciate afresh the sacrifices made by that generation. Our Gospel today is all about community, the ties of love that bind us together, as Jesus talks about the importance of abiding in his and the Father's love. This passage from John's Gospel, chapter 15, follows Jesus' description of himself as the vine, evoking the image of Mediterranean hillsides where ancient grapevines with deep roots are able to extend many branches along a trellis or frame, each of them laden with bunches of sweet grapes. In this picture, Jesus is the vine with deep roots into God's love. We are the branches which must be connected to that vine if we're to bear fruit. And the fruit we bear, in a word, is also love, shown in the selfless service we give in the care we freely offer, and supremely through personal, costly sacrifice. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. It's a fruit, Jesus says, that will stand the test of time, never shriveling or rotting, but lasting for all eternity. Worth pondering those words when we're giving out all we can, perhaps feeling exhausted, may be unappreciated or taken for granted. To return to Jesus' analogy, the challenging part is that Jesus also says, apart from me, you can do nothing, pointing out that if branches break away or snap off from the vine, they wither and die, and their only use is for fuel. To turn this around for a moment, we can also say, that where there's real fruit in someone's life. When we see someone who's shining with love through the care and service they give and through the sacrifices they're making, then this shows they must be connected to the vine, to deep roots of love, even though they mightn't recognise it. Indeed, I've known people of all faiths and none who've revealed glimpses of God's grace in a way that's both humbling and inspiring, 
not least in these past eight months. As we look ahead to the next eight months, it's clear that many challenges remain. Perhaps the biggest challenge of all is stamina, keeping up our collective effort to stay safe and ensure everyone is okay, especially those who are most vulnerable or isolated. To come back to the vine, the principal message is that we're all connected. We need each other and we need to be fed by the love of God which supports everyone and everything. The very ground of our being. Indeed, love, the Bible teaches us, is eternal, flowing from the heart of God through us and so on to each other. The lifeblood of every caring community, every loving friendship and every healthy family. As a church community, and church is of course the people, not the building, we'll continue to celebrate and proclaim that love in every way we can, through our worship, whether in the church building or online, by reaching out and phoning those who are isolated and vulnerable, by praying earnestly for each part of the community in this corner of God's kingdom, by supporting the bereaved, and continuing to light the spire as a beacon of hope. Of course, we're just one small part of this community, and I wish to salute everyone in the wider community who's doing their bit, showing their love and care in acts of service, encouraging and building one another up, finding creative ways to come together and celebrate what community means. This online service, in its organisation, and through its participants, representing council and church, school and band, legion and fire brigade, all coming together at extremely short notice, is a great example of what makes Coles Hill a special place to live and work. I pray that this community spirit may continue, and I pray that those who've not yet discovered the value of faith, who've not felt the Father's love supporting and guiding them, may do so. I began by referring to our lifelines. Frankly, the more we have, the better off and the more secure we are. My belief, as I've said, is that each and every one of them is ultimately a gift from God. The storms of life, referred to by St Paul in our first reading, included hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril and sword. We might relate to some on that list right now. Certainly in wartime, many of them rang true. St Paul was clear that such trials do not represent God's condemnation or judgment. Rather, they are an opportunity to discover the power of love at work in one another and amongst us. The cords of love, the ties that bind, that join us through the spirit of Jesus Christ to God himself. At a time of great challenge, and not just COVID, indeed let's not forget the environmental challenge and security challenge. At a time of great inequality, when many are suspicious of others. At a time when bitter divisions threaten to further polarise communities. At a time in our world when too many people still live with the reality or threat of conflict. Let's work tirelessly for love, for peace and for joy. Inspired to do so by the spirit of courageous and selfless service of our NHS staff, carers and other key workers. Inspired by those who made the ultimate sacrifice in years past to protect our nation and the values we hold so dear. And inspired by the one who made the ultimate sacrifice laying down his life in order to offer forgiveness, reconciliation and peace, not just for one nation, but for all the peoples of the world. As I close, three images come to mind. The NHS rainbows painted by so many children and still hanging in many windows. The soldier and sailor carved on either side of the war memorial on Church Hill and the cross that stands above them may each represent a lifeline connecting us to one another 
and to God, reminding us to care, calling us to keep on making sacrifices for the good of others, and shielding us with love, that divine love which is without limit, and that cannot be torn apart, whether by death or life, by angels or rulers, by things present or things to come, by powers, by height or depth or anything else in all creation. We have no power to help ourselves, but need God's Spirit to direct our lives. Ever-living God, remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted, either by death or life, hear our prayers and thanksgiving for all whom we remember this day. Fulfil in them the purpose of your love, and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed. Kindle, we pray, in the hearts of all the true love of peace and guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquillity your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for hospital staff and all those who are carers, those on the front line at the present time. 
Gracious God, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick, and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work many will be restored to health. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for us all through this time of the pandemic. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that they may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, stretch forth your mighty arm to strengthen and protect the armed forces. Grant that meeting danger with courage, and all occasions with discipline and loyalty, they may truly serve the cause of justice and peace, to the honour of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in the words that our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you've placed in the hearts of all people, and live lives of justice, courage and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. Tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. And so we come now to our blessing as we close our service. May God grant to the living grace to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all mankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Well, the band will now play us out. And my thanks again to them and to all who've been able to participate in this recording. Thank you for participating at home. Please do support the Poppy Appeal by going to britishlegion.org.uk and making a donation. Although the church cannot open its doors to the public for services, we will continue to stream services each Sunday at 10.30 on our Facebook page. And our church will be open for private prayer. Today, this Remembrance Sunday, that will be from 12 noon through until 4 o'clock. And then thereafter, on other Sundays, it will be from 2 
until four and there's the opportunity to come in and to light a candle as part of that prayer. We hope to see you again soon, whether it's in person or online. And thank you for joining us. God bless.